Uh, Don, could you pop the hood on that? I don't know. I don't know whoever lowers the hood on these things. This happens to be the culmination of John Wetz's lifetime of work, and uh, Bill Ryan did all the machine work, and Bill is going to now explain it to us. Did you get paid for the work, Bill? Well, then you should be happy. You should be happier than anybody else in the steam business. What this has here is Bill is going to explain to you. We started out with a <laughs> with with a Nissan four-cylinder, and we made it into a two-cylinder bash valve. And and the front two cylinders, he just sawed off the connecting rod. How long was the connecting rod left? Oh. Is there a little bit of connecting rod? Oh, okay, so you didn't see, see it. But anyhow, to make this a uniflow is amazingly clever because, and, and Bill did this, and you need to look at this over here. There's a plate right there on the side of the block. And so a rectangular hole was milled out, and that was to get into the, the water jacket. And then you can you 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 can look in there and you can see these two cylinders. Bill will explain this here shortly, as soon as I'm done explaining it. So then, you <laughs> so then so then you go in there, and you mill this way and this way, and there's four there's four. How how what's the diameter of those uh, Uniflow ports? There's four three quarter, and they're not quite equidistant because you couldn't quite get in there to make them at 90, but they're kind of like what 60. Oh, they're just all straight in. Oh, so they weren't this way. Okay. So anyhow, and then he's got the two cylinders in front. And so uh, uh, John figured out that he's going to have blow-by and he's going to get oil in the water and water in the oil, so forget about it. So he just, he just exhausted the, uh, there's our Canadian friend, so he just exhausted right into the, right into the, the, the uh, no, right into the water, right into the uh, water jacket, <laughs> right into the crankcase, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Shot right, forget about it. Because he has the world's biggest oil water oil water separator here, and you got to have a little one. So if you got a little one, you might as well have a big one. So then uh, he put a couple of uh, of water preheaters. He has two copper coils up there. Did you make the copper coils, Bill? Anyhow, they're sitting up there in those in those dummy dummy cylinders. So away you go. And the genius of this, and this is the genius right here is your, you have adjustments as to how far up you can, you can adjust your bash valves from the outside. Would you like to explain how that works, Bill? That's something that he added to it after I delivered the engine. That was your one opportunity to say something, Bill, and you... You blew it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, how close did he come to getting it, making it run? Uh, my understanding is he turned the engine over a couple of times, got that running, and he had to do more work on his boiler. Where, where's the water pump? Well, he had the water pump mounted right here, but it's not in here. We can put some out right here. Bill made the water pump so that you'd have the water pump and the oil pump all in one unit. What else was in there? It was three pumps in a row. And two of them were feed water. And one was an oil pump. And the 
the solenoid would hook to one of the water pumps and he could trip the water pump on and off with that solenoid depending on how much water was needed. Over here we have the world famous John Wett's barrel burner. And don't tell my wife, but when I purchased this from John Wett's, he quoted me a price on it, and I immediately wrote a check for a thousand dollars more. So there you go. Thousand and hundred dollars is all he wanted. But, well, I didn't say what he wanted. I told you, I told you what I wrote him for. <laughs> Anyhow, what this is is from here down it's a uh, it's a, a mobile steam society uh, coil stack uh, and then from there up it's a burner and it's a downdraft solid fuel burner and it's got a, a Volkswagen cooling fan running on a jack shaft and so you pull the the air through and so when in the next few days, you're going to watch me drive a uh, my my dune buggy, where I have the fire underneath the coils, and you will then, uh, on, as you drive home from the meet, you will give a little thought as to who was the smart person, uh, John Wetz or me, and uh, my suggestion is that you do that thinking uh, after you leave the meet and on the drive home. Uh, we we don't see any good coming out of thinking about that before you leave the meet. We 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 can't imagine any possible positive benefit. Tell us about the control. This is the most incredibly. Roger Ulsky said to me last year, "You spend all your time talking about how great the John Wetz controller is. Why don't you have any of them that work on your things?" And I said. Well, that's really not really a, a, a the proper question, seeing as none of my things work. I really think that's asking a little much to have a John Wetz controller that works because nothing else I have works, so I don't know what's the reason for have a controller that works. So anyhow, by the time I got done explaining explain it to Roger, he quit asking. <laughs> he, so, so it was a great success. You want to admire, you'd want to admire the homemade Bordeaux tube. John didn't have any money. So you take two rocks and you beat this copper tube together, and the copper tube has no spring, so you put a spring on it. And, the, uh, and you have micro switches here, and then you have uh, other micro switches and relays, and it's just the slickest thing you ever saw. And this blue thing goes like this. Does anybody have a, a water cup or a coffee cup on them? Guess not. Okay, good. There's one right there. Well, yeah, that'll work. So one day, John Wetz had a styrofoam coffee cup. So you know how people are. They sit there and they do this. I said, John, if this is such a genius idea, how'd you invent it? He says, well, one day I was staring at my coffee cup. He spent most of his life staring at a coffee cup when he wasn't trying to light his pipe. And he said he noticed that when it goes this way, it goes that way, see? Mm -hmm. So you have this feedback loop mechanism. and the cold water goes through here and that contracts uh, when the cold water goes through it and the fire is right there so it expands when the, all the time when the fire hits it and then your hot water goes through this way and, and it's got a, an open slide somewhere and so that expands as the steam gets hotter and so what happens is it, uh, you, you can never flood the monotube boiler. So it's a feedback mechanism. Doble spent his entire life working on normalizers, and John Wetz went him like two steps better. It's absolute genius, uh, nothing better. So what we have here is an interesting example, which is why I should have had uh, Jaime put the, the uh, locomotive car in this side by side. So we have the classic example of the pure craftsman 
genius fabricator who knew nothing about s steam design and you have the most genius steam designer that, that I've ever seen for a monotube boiler solid fuel uh, who didn't have any money, didn't have any, did he, it was, he had a dirt floor in his garage, didn't he, Bill? Yeah. Dirt floor in the garage. And didn't even have, I don't think he had a, lay, anyhow, he would, and, and my favorite, of course, is the bicycle, the corn cob burning bicycle. And it, it just, you, you take two rocks and pound together to make this thing. Anyhow, it's a brilliant design. So there you go, John Wetz. Okay, now, in 93, John Wetz's, John, John Wetz's three daughters gave this to me if I would promise to store it inside and show it to people. And it's been stored inside and uh, I show it to people.